as someone who has sung that song many times, it takes on a whole new meaning when it's presented Easter morning. Thank you. Thank you. Well, welcome, folks. We gather this day on the ancestral lands of the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, the Métis peoples, the home of the Allied Nations, now known as the Mississaugas of the Credit. May our time of celebration, of hearing stories of God's redeeming grace, God's abiding love that transcends death and rises to new life, take on deeper meaning as we remember the indigenous narrative of our country, of resilience in the face of annihilation, of rising from the reality of cultural assimilation, of living in harmony and respect with creator and the created. May God's call to right relations, reconciliation, new life, be our call to justice an end to all human suffering, our commitment to following love's way, the way of the resurrected Christ. Please just take a moment of silence to center yourself and to reflect. In ancient times, people would say, Christ is risen, and the response was, he is risen indeed. And so I say to you, Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. And so we gather in the light of the risen one. We gather in hope in promise, in love. Let us sing together our centering response. And so welcome to everyone who is gathered here in person, everyone who is online joining us. I'm Sue Cowan, the minister here at St. John's United Church, Georgetown and Glen Williams, and I say welcome in the name of the Risen One. So let us join together responsively in our call to worship. Please join me. This is the day. This is the day of the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that our God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Please stand as you are able and let us sing together. Come and join the celebration. Words by Carolyn Winfrey Gillette and sung to a very familiar tune.
please be seated. Let us pray. Living God, rejoicing in this day of resurrection, we have come to celebrate the strength of your love, a love that triumphs even over death. As we delight in the miracle of your incarnate love, we thank you for the opportunity to encounter the risen Christ here in our midst. May your spirit enliven our worship, animate our offerings, and engage us fully in your story of unmerited grace and love that moves beyond all borders or boundaries, redeeming, reconciling resurrecting, reimagining your kingdom coming in us, through us, as we bear witness to your indescribable love, through our loving actions towards your beloved creation, we offer our prayer in the name and way of Jesus. Amen. You might want to come to this side. To you, it might be a tea bag. But it's going to tell a story. An Easter story about a man who is labeled. They put a label on his cross. And a man who is whipped. And some of those bags that have staples remind us that he was nailed to a cross. But on that Easter morning, when the women came 
with their spices. They found that the linens, there was no one there. They found that Jesus was gone. And they said, where did he go? And until they realized God's spirit had come upon him. And he was raised from the dead. Hallelujah. His eyes are like saucers. It's okay, let's go back to grandma, okay? <laughs> what was that, he said. Don't tell your dad what I did in church, okay? And so we sing together, hallelujah, hallelujah, give thanks. Good morning. If we are honest, the Easter story always leaves us with more questions than answers. Yet, its telling, year after year, grounds our faith as Easter people and reminds us that we are followers of one who is always with us, one who loves us beyond measure, one who defeated death so that we might live abundantly for all time. As this is a family service, I will be reading from Archbishop Desmond Tutu's Children of God Storybook Bible, his telling of Luke 24 and John 20. Jesus is alive. Two days after Jesus died, 
Mary and several other women went to the tomb where he had been buried. They were shocked to see that the stone that had covered the opening had been ro rolled away. They looked inside. Jesus' body was gone. Two angels in dazzling clothes said, why are you looking for Jesus here? Jesus is alive. Go tell the others. The women rushed to tell the disciples. At first, no one believed them. A little while later, the disciples gathered to talk about what had happened. Suddenly, Jesus stood right in front of them. Peace be with you, Jesus said. The disciples were so frightened, they clutched each other and trembled. But Jesus said, don't be afraid, it is me. Look at my hands and feet, touch me. But they still could not believe Jesus was alive. Give me a piece of fish, said Jesus. He took the fish and ate it, and his followers were convinced. Jesus really was alive and back with them again. They were so happy, they laughed and clapped their hands in joy. Oh God, help us to see that Jesus lives, and may we help others to see this too. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious one, we hear your story. We know your story. We get the words of your story. Help us to truly understand the depths of this story, that we might live fully with gratitude and in your grace. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, O oh God, our Redeemer. Amen. It's kind of an interesting approach that Desmond Tutu takes in his children's Bible. He, he marries these two stories together. Here is a man who is born in poverty of Mixosa and Motswana heritage. He trains as a teacher before entering seminary. He rises to the world scene as a social activist, a voice for anti-apartheid, pro-gay rights, the co-creator of a multiracial democracy lovingly referred to as Rainbow Nation. His faithful living and generous loving leads him to win a Nobel Peace Prize before his death in December 2021. The late Archbishop Desmond Tutu combines these two beloved stories to show us that Jesus lives and death has been defeated. Yet the story does not end there. How we respond to the good news of what God is doing is telling. Are we awed by the message and able to go and tell? Are we frightened by the message and still require proof to know? Can we hear the words, do not be afraid? which moves us from sacrifice to service? Can we see the risen one in our midst, which moves us from observant to obedient? Can we live into Christ's commandment to love one another, which challenges us to reach out with all compassion? Can we delight in the news we have received and then boldly dare to share it so all might know God's grace and love? Look around you. The, the tomb is empty. 
He is not there. He is here. He is the baby growing in the belly of a mother. He's here in the toddler, learning their way into the world. In the child's wonder and curiosity and questions. In the teen, participating in the local sports scene. Or working at a store. Jesus lives in the young adult, walking on the coldest night for his neighbors, helping with the community unity cleanups, and the leaders who plan each of these events. He's in the faithful who serve at Ev's Kitchen or Food for Life all who maintain the church property and finances, the folks who welcome the refugees or wield a hammer for Habitat for Humanity, all who visit shut-in members, help a neighbor, support the infirmed. Christ is alive in all who stand with communities of people who continue to be oppressed, Indigenous, black, Asian, I could go on and on and on. All who sit with the dying and comfort the bereaved. Jesus is there with all who stand for justice and strive to live in right relations with God's people and God's creation. All who seek to bear love live love, embody Christ's love. I invite you to look to your right. And then look to your left. Jesus is here. He is here. So do not be afraid. But go, go and tell the good news of everything God is doing here. Go and with every breath, share the love of Jesus with others so they too might experience his forgiveness, his acceptance, his his love, his teachings, that they too might be lifted by his grace and receive his invitation to follow and serve in love's way. Beloved of God, the tomb is empty. Hallelujah. Jesus lives. Hallelujah. And we are blessed to be called, to be his voice, his hands, his feet, his love, in a community that is broken like we are and needs God's love. So yes, the story of Easter is one of shock and awe. Of fear and faith, it's both beautiful and challenging. Hope-filled and intimidating. It raises questions, stimulates thoughtful pondering. It perplexes and puzzles us and dares us to think beyond ourselves, beyond what we currently know or fully understand. It defies the most logical, confronts the most faithful, and counters holy mystery, as it should. Yet best of all, the Easter story is not over. It's not done yet. It continues to be written in you and me and all of us as community when we love extravagantly, share abundantly, brave adversity, respect and honor diversity, bless and receive blessings, because we dare to encounter the Holy One, the Risen One, wanting, hoping, believing we will be changed. So be brave, dear ones. Be brave, risk in hope, be loud, be proud, dream big and act even bigger, for the tomb is 
empty. And this story, this resurrection story of renewal, rebirth, restored life, is your personal invitation to live the story. Be the story. Bear the story. Bear witness to the story. Go and tell the story so others will know that Jesus lives. Hallelujah. May it be so for the glory of God. Amen. And so we respond today not in song but in word. So I invite you to join me responsively. The stone is gone. The tomb is empty. The angels have come. The linens are discarded. And yet, Jesus is risen. Jesus is alive. Jesus is in their midst. When our lives seem empty, when our lives are full of pain, when we find no quick fixes, when we cannot find hope, and yet Christ is risen. Christ is alive. Christ is in our midst. Amen. And so I invite Christian Education to share a few brief announcements. Good morning and a happy Easter to everyone. My name is Crystal Dupain and I'm part of the Christian Education Committee. I'm bringing you the announcements for this week. On April the 11th, TRIAS is having a meeting in Celebration Hall and the guest speaker will be from the Townsend Smith Foundation where we will learn something about the hospice that they are building there. On April the 16th, the Sunday service, and after the service, there's a lasagna lunch in the Celebration Hall. The Marian Singers of Greater Toronto are performing here in the Sanctuary Concert Hall, Friday, April the 21st at 8 p.m. Tickets are $38 and will be on sale after church today in Celebration Hall. On April the 23rd, there will be a joint service with St. Andrew's United Church in our congregation. It's here. Yes, in our congregation. And and please, will you tell everyone that our doors are not closing? Thank you. We give thanks for the gifts of people that keep our ministry alive, that share Christ's love with many here in this space and beyond in our community and even wider in the global community. Our offerings will now be received and dedicated. We, there are, if you missed the plates on the way in, there's places for you to give on the way out. Do not worry. And so we bless these gifts as we rise and sing together.
Gracious God, we thank you for the opportunity to share in your work and your witness in this place. We give thanks for your ministry that is made possible through us and in us, that we might bless our community and all communities we love with your presence. With your words, do not be afraid. With your hope, with your grace. May your spirit enliven all that has been offered. Blessing upon blessing, that the good news of your risen Son might be known to all creation. Amen. Please be seated. And so we gather at this table to share an Easter meal, to experience the risen one, and to know God's love for us. We come to this place to experience the one who does not abandon us, the one who forgives our sins and offers us abundant grace, abundant life beyond measure. We meet the risen Christ in our moments of giving and receiving, a meal that nourishes our bodies, our minds, our spirits. And in this communion, we will share with one another and all who are partaking this day globally. All are welcome to dine this day. At this table, there are no boundaries or borders no barriers or labels. There's a diverse experience of people in this room. All are welcome. There's diverse understandings. All are accepted. We are beloved of God, honored and celebrated. Our different longings and needs are fed by one who is in all and over all, children of God, believers in the resurrected Christ, let us be Easter as we give thanks this day. For Christ is risen. Lift your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy mystery, who is holy love. You are beyond complete knowledge, above perfect description, Father and Mother of all creation, Son and Holy Spirit, source of love, living word, and bond of light. You are creative and self-giving, generously moving in all the near and far corners of the universe. Nothing exists that does not find its source in you. Through fear-filled days and aching nights, when the powers of death have done their worst, your love has not deserted us. Even when we turn away from you, you are with us. Your presence never fails us. Your gifts of hope and new life transform us. We praise you for Jesus, risen to life, eternal as your, your love. With the women at the tomb, we raise the strain of gladness. Hallelujah. For life is stronger than death. The day of resurrection has come, scattering fear and gloom. And so we rejoice with all your people of every time and place, and with angels and archangels to proclaim the glory of your name.
It is Jesus, God incarnate, the risen Christ, who joins us together as community of broken yet hopeful believers, loving what he loved, living what he taught, serving to be his faithful, seeking to be his ser- faithful servants in our time and place. In this meal, we remember Jesus, his promises, and the price he paid for who he was, for what he believed, for what he said, and what he did. On the night before Jesus died, he took a loaf of bread, gave thanks, broke it, and said, Take, eat, do this in remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup and poured it, saying, This is the new covenant. Remember me. We remember. We remember his life of love, his friendship, his teaching, his dying, and his rising to new life again. In sharing this meal, we live out the mystery of our faith. God, the Spirit, we call on you to transform these familiar things as you continually transform the world around us. Bless the bread, bless the cup, and bless each one who receives. Bless the wheat and the grape, the seed and the sower, the farmer and the harvest, so that in sharing these gifts, we might in community taste and see your goodness. Through Christ, in Christ, and with Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, O God, most holy now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. On this resurrection day, O God, we give you thanks for the fullness of life you offer. We remember with all whom you would have us share your feast. We pray for your elderly, folks who are housebound, for many with health concerns that keep them from gathering with us this day. We pray for all who are grieving, all who are experiencing loss, be it jobs, relationships, homes, a way of living. May they know they are loved, and remembered that they are not alone. We pray for all who live with fear, oppression, hunger, all whom the world counts as last and least, simply because of their skin color, differing beliefs or abilities, gender and orientation, social status or wealth. We pray for Christ's church and its varied ministries, for our United Church of Canada and her leaders, for nations as they strive for peace and justice. We pray, O God, for victims of violence throughout the globe, for the fragile web of life that is threatened by human greed, our overmining of her resources, our wasteful ways that harm the water, the air, the earth, your creatures, your creation. Today in our silence, we give thanks and remember others who we hold dear. This day, O God, reveal to us your presence in new ways. Bind us together in unity. Move in us so we will respond faithfully. 
empower us as Christ's witness to joyfully tell his story. Be with us as we commune together, as we go from this place strengthened in body, ignited with your passion, recommitted with new resolve to love as Christ loved, serve as he served, seeking peace and justice for others and ourselves. This we pray in the name of spirit and spirit of Jesus, whose inclusive love calls us to pray by saying these new words, earthmaker, painter, life giver, source of all.
for all who are broken. He took the bread and he said, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat and remember me. And he poured the cup for his friends. Blessing God, praising God for all who had brought the wine to harvest. And he said, this is the new covenant, my new covenant poured out for you. As often as you drink from my cup, remember me. As you can see with great excitement, we are not using friendship cups today. No more crinkling, my friends. There is a gluten-free option if you need so, please ask. It is separately here on the table. We will be serving with tongs to keep safety as best we can. So we invite you to come up the center aisle, place your hands to receive the bread. Take a cup and then you can move to the side and take what time you need to commune, and then return to your seat. There are baskets at the end of the front two pews to place your empty cups in. And so we say, all is prepared. All are welcome. Come, let us feast and remember.
If you could just raise, I hear a few people could not come forward. If you would just give an indication, and we will come back and serve you in your spaces. I gather all were fed then. Hallelujah. Bread of life offered to you, Shelley. Let us join together in our prayer following communion. Thank you, O Christ, for this feast of life. We are fed by your love. We are strengthened by your life. We are sent forth into this world to live your way and share your joy. We are now commissioned to feed as we have been fed, forgive as we have been forgiven, love as we have been loved, Thanks be to God. Amen. For those without a bulletin, you thought we forgot this hymn? No, we did not. And so please let us rise and joyfully sing, Jesus Christ is risen today.
as you might have noticed, I have placed some trays of tea bags for you to enjoy and remember the children's time, to marvel maybe your grandchildren or great-grands with a little bit of pyrotechnics this Easter day. And so please join me as we share in our blessing and sending forth. Send us forth, O God, like tombs giving way to your light. Send us out into the world. to join us in sharing in Handel's Messiah at this moment, to come quickly forward so we can sing God our praises one more time before we head out into the world. Let us sing.
Church, St. John, where everybody's family, this is that church, St. John, where everybody's family, this is that church, St. John, where everybody's family.